now on News Channel 6 at 11, a new treatment approved for COVID-19. Hear all about the newest tool in the pandemic. Plus, another freeze on student loan repayment. Why experts say the pause is a welcome surprise. A string of deadly fires in Aiken. What investigators say sparked the fires as your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dernisa Jefferson. Brad and Jenny have the night off. Coverage you can count on begins tonight with the FDA authorizing emergency use of the first COVID-19 pill. Truly is a game changer for what the future of this pandemic looks like. Pfizer's COVID-19 pills could soon be a game changer. The treatment is the first for COVID that's in the form of a pill. Having this over the next couple of weeks being available, a very important tool to be able to potentially treat those that are positive for COVID-19 and at high risk for that hospitalization and death. Pfizer's Paxlovid pills can be given to a patient immediately after testing positive for COVID-19 or within five days of the onset of symptoms. Doctors at AU say the pill could mean fewer COVID hospitalizations and deaths. This certainly will have an impact on decreasing the number of hospitalizations that health systems will face, um, especially in the future when this medication Paxlovid is widely available. However, doctors say it's important to note that this is an emergency use authorization and not an approval. It could still be days or weeks before the pill is widely available. Don't know what that time frame looks like, and it's going to be important for people to keep that in mind um, when they test positive um, and as they reach out for what are their options. When the pill does become widely available, it's expected to protect against both the Delta and Omicron variants. It is believed that this protease inhibitor will be effective against Omicron, it'd be effective against Delta, it'd be effective against Alpha, and potentially many other or not all variants in the future. Doctors also say less than 5% of people had any kind of adverse effects in the clinical trials of the pill. Before heading to see your family for Christmas, you might be trying to get a COVID-19 test done. Many people are using at-home COVID tests. These at-home antigen tests can get you results within 15 to 30 minutes. Experts say these rapid home tests are another tool in the fight against COVID-19. The downside of these rapid tests is that it's not as sensitive as the molecular test. Dr. Jane Kelly says if you get a positive result from an at-home test, you should contact your health provider right away. There are two reasons to contact your health care provider. Number one, there may be other treatments that you could receive, monoclonal antibodies, as I mentioned, but also that health care provider will probably want to repeat your test. The reason for that is because they can do that genome testing to figure out what, if you have the Omicron variant. This week, President Joe Biden announced a plan to send out 500 million free at-home rapid tests starting next month. Well, now it's time to take a look at your weather forecast with our chief meteorologist, Tim Miller. And Tim, today was pleasantly warm compared to that super cold day we had yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was the first day of winter. We talked about it earlier. It had felt like it. It looked like Definitely it. Definitely felt like it. Yeah, today was a big improvement for sure. And a proof in the pudding here uh, tonight, 65 degrees, our high temperature this afternoon. Start a little chilly at 36, but tomorrow morning, It'll be chillier than we have this morning. In fact, right now, 36 is our current temperature. That's in Bushfield, but check this out. Notice in Daniel Field, that's 47 degrees. That's a big temperature swing, as obviously it's a little warmer in town. 43 in Aiken and clear skies galore. In fact, our satellite and radar loop all across the CSRA is showing absolutely wonderful conditions, although it's chilly. Tuesday view, pretty much the same thing. It's clear skies. Notice a little swirly guy. That's high pressure. That's going to keep us High, dry, and chilly for tomorrow morning, but then it'll start to warm us up over the next couple of days. Our water vapor loop shows a lot of dry air. This brown or orange you see on your screen, you probably feel it with your nose, your hands. This is very, very dry. So 30 tomorrow morning, some of our colder locations wouldn't surprise me at all. We see some uh, upper 20s to so bundle up uh, tomorrow morning. Our day planner for your Thursday, there it is, 58 degrees by tomorrow afternoon. Another chilly morning for Friday morning, and then those overnight lows are going to start to warm up. But wait till you see the temperatures during the day and for Christmas. We'll talk more about that with your forecast in just a little bit, Teresa. 
All right, thanks so much, Tim. The payment pause on federal student loan debt put in place at the start of the pandemic will now last until May. Manny Ramirez has reactions. It kind of feels like I'm going to be stuck with this for the rest of my life. Noah Carolero is like millions of Americans mired in student loan debt after going to college at Full Sail University in Florida. It's a lot of stress carrying around the fact that I have $25,000 in debt, but with interest and after five years, that $25,000 could turn into fifty or 60000 He started repaying his loans in March of 2019, a full year before forbearance began. Carolero says he still continues to make payments during the moratorium, adding that any bit of relief helps. It's only a couple months, and for me, since my payments are about like 400 a month, that's only like 800 to $1,200, but I have to look at it on the positive side and realize that's $1,200 I paid that doesn't get like gain interest or anything like that. This is a wonderful gift to those, particularly those who've been struggling for the last few years. Uh, but this this should not be seen as a as a get out of loan free card. Coker University Vice President of College Experience Patrick Rickards oversees the university's financial aid office. He says the extension of federal student loan forbearance serves recent graduates as well, but he warns against banking on federal debt elimination. If you're a recent college graduate and you decide I'm just not going to pay, I'm going to default on the loans, nobody's going to mind. Um, they're going to mind when you want to buy a car. They're going to mind when you want to buy your first house with your spouse. The child tax credit put in place by the American Rescue Act is coming to an end. The credit gave families an extra $550 every month. Many families say they benefited from the extra money, and some families, especially those with single moms, say they will feel the strain when the higher payments stop. majority of people that I know, the real Americans who need this money, they're using it for their children, they're using it for child care expenses, and they're using it to put food on the table and to keep their lights on and have a home. That's what I know that people are using this for. Well, we've got the boys here. There will still be a child tax credit after the first of the new year, but it's not as much as the temporary payments were. A teenager is behind bars tonight after a deadly shooting in Augusta. It happened on the Falcon, Falcon Crest apartments around 1130 this morning. When deputies arrived, they found 17-year-old Xavier Knight dead with at least one gunshot wound. A 14-year-old girl was arrested and charged with involuntary manslaughter. That person's identity has not yet been released. Business owners want a bigger police presence in Somerville after their bar was broken into. Surveillance video from last Thursday shows one person throwing a rock into the front door of Sheehan's Irish Pub. That person then stole the cash register while two others kept watch outside the bar. The owners want Richmond County to send more deputies to patrol the area. This whole little block right there on Central and Montesano is all businesses. So we all kind of try to stick together and support one another. So just kind of knowing that one of us got hit makes it a little bit nerve wracking. Neighbors helped the owners clean up the broken glass and replace it in just three hours. They were able to open for business that same day. Marcy's law protects the information of crime victims from being released to the public. But should that cover police officers involved in fatal shootings? The Florida Supreme Court is now weighing that question. Jake Stofan has a story. Florida voters approved Marcy's law and established a Crime Victims Bill of Rights in the state constitution back in 2018. But following two fatal police shootings in 2020, Marcy's law was used to shield the identities of the officers involved. Marcy's law allows for somebody who's been victimized beginning at the time of his or her victimization to prevent the disclosure of information that could lead to um, their identity being revealed or their being subject to other forms of harassment. Attorney Luke Newman is representing the Police Benevolent Association, which sued the city of Tallahassee after it said it would release the names of the officers. He argues the officers were victims of crime. They were both victims of aggravated assault, one with a deadly weapon and one with a firearm. But the First Amendment Foundation, which intervened in the case, argues shielding the identities of officers involved in shootings would be detrimental to police accountability. They've taken on this job to protect and serve. And that means when something goes wrong, there needs to be transparency. The attorney representing the PBA says this case can be whittled down to a basic question. Is an on-duty officer a person? My clients are people as well. And so that's who's covered by the language of the Florida Constitution and they're asserting their right to be covered by that plain language. 
final ruling by the Florida Supreme Court will set the precedent on how future officer-involved shootings are handled throughout the entire state. The state of Georgia passed the Marcy's Law in 2018. South Carolina has a crime victim rights amendment, but no Marcy's Law. In less than two weeks, five people have died in house fires across the CSRA. Four of those fire fatalities happened in Aiken. Er Captain Eric Abdullah of the Aiken County Sheriff's Office says they were due in part to electrical issues. The department took to Facebook with a warning, including not connecting extension cords, running cords under rugs, and putting space heaters too close to other objects. We know that your precious memories are inside your home. Um, and, and all your personal effects, you know, but we can't replace your life. House fire fatalities are often caused by smoke inhalation. A county sheriff's office encourages everyone to install a, install a smoke detector, change the batteries and test it regularly. There should be at least one smoke detector located outside all bedrooms. Coming up, a balloon release honoring a homeless veteran. What friends are saying about Willie Walker one year after his death. 